Haven't had an experience like that since D102 Financial Accounting. Let's jump into it. C172 Network and Security Foundations. Now gather around kids because I'm going to tell you the story of this class. So uh, I started this class right after I finished workforce planning, I think. Uh, and after the first few days, I realized that it's not going to be a course that I can just knock out real fast like I can some other courses. Uh, I'm super new to almost anything IT. I know very basic stuff uh, about like operations on a computer and stuff, but I have no idea about anything about firewalls or networks. Uh, I'm pretty new to it. They've gone over a little bit of topologies and other classes that I've done, but I actually don't know anything really about IT. So after about a week of jumping into this class, I was like, okay, I think I'm going to have to give myself about two weeks for this course. So I studied my butt off. I watched all the cohorts. Uh, I took the practice and quizzes and stuff. I took the PA when I, uh, probably about like five days into, you know, studying for the course. And yeah, I don't think I passed it, but I did okay on it. So I studied for another, you know, maybe five days or so. Took the PA again and I passed it with exemplary. So I was like, okay, cool, I'm ready. Uh, so I scheduled, after about two weeks of studying, I scheduled the OA. Uh, I hopped into the OA, you know, went through it, felt super confident. Um, you know, it, heart. Sorry, my Roomba uh, apparently wants to be charged. But uh, anyway, so I jumped into it uh, super confident that uh, I was going to pass it. Uh, I whizzed through it. I think I finished the, uh, there's 70 questions on the OA, and I think I finished the OA in like 30 minutes. That's how confident I was. I was just like, oh, I know that one, I know that one, I know that one, and just sped through it real fast. Uh, got to the end, uh, you know, closed it out, opened up my, uh, like the homepage for WGU, expecting to see, you know, my little percentage go up for completed courses, and I had failed it. And uh, in my egotistical, uh, narcissistic brain, I was like, that just has to be a fluke, right? Like, I knew this material. I studied for two weeks. I watched all the cohorts multiple times. You know, I even surprisingly opened up their reading material uh, a decent amount. I was like, there's absolutely no way. That had to have been a fluke. That had to have been a wrong OA. I know this material. Uh, I'm going to see what I can do. So I jumped straight into, for people that are new to, like, retakes and stuff, uh, your mentor has to, or not mentor, your course instructor has to approve your next attempt. Uh, so, but as soon as I got done with that, I looked and it said uh, request approved. It must have just been a glitch in the system after talking to my course instructor. Uh, I was like, which is, this is the, I don't advise this, this is the wrong thing to do, but I was such in a fog of uh, ego that I was like, that was a fluke. I'm going to go ahead and take it again and two hours after I had already uh, failed it the first time because I know this material, you know, there's no way that I failed that. Uh, I took it again and failed it again. I don't know what I was thinking, you know, like honestly my ego just took over and I was super, I was so confident about the material, like I felt I honestly knew it, so I just figured it was a fluke. So I took the OA, failed it to, you know, rescheduled it, studied for like another two hours, took it again and then failed it again. Uh, when I talked to my course instructor, she said that shouldn't have happened. Like, she has to manually request it. It must have been a, gl a glitch in the system or something. And that, uh, you know, that they never advise that. And honestly, I had to wait for the results of my second attempt because if you take an OA, just for people who don't know, if you take an OA, if you take two OAs in the same 24-hour period, uh, they will lock the results of the second one. So you actually have to call, like, student services and have them unlock it. But uh, anyway, so after I failed that second one, she was like, well, you need to, the course instructor was like, you need to set up an appointment with me. I set up an appointment with her. So just so you're aware for this particular course, every course is a little bit different with how they handle uh, study plans, I think. But with this specific one, if you fail a second attempt, you have to schedule at least three attempts, or not three attempts, you have to schedule three meetings with that course instructor. Uh, so, you know, I'm on this you know, plan to graduate by uh, mid-December. So I just scheduled three meetings, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I think. Uh, and every single day we just went over all the things that, you know, I apparently thought I knew but uh, didn't know very well. 
I think what happened with the PA, and you know, I like the second attempt on the PA, I scored exemplary. And I've said this before, but it's worth repeating: is that uh, if you're going to take a PA more than once to see what kind, see if you retain the material, you need to not look at the answers for the first PA you take. You know, you should treat it like an OA where you can't actually look at what you got right and got wrong. Uh, after you take your final PA, for, before you take your OA, you can review the answers you got right and wrong. But if you review the questions that you got right and wrong on uh, your first attempt at a PA, and then you plan on taking another one, you're really just memorizing answers. And with a course like this especially, uh, memorizing answers doesn't necessarily help you out because a lot of this was scenario-based, like a lot of other things in uh, WGU is... Like, the OAs are a lot of scenario-based, and what's the best uh, application for this specific scenario? So just memorizing an answer you got on one scenario doesn't necessarily mean it's going to translate to another scenario. So anyway, I met with the course instructor three times. Uh, she sent me a bunch of su supplemental material. She sent me the Quizlet, which is really good. Uh, I would recommend using Quizlet on all your you know, courses, especially because, like, you can hit learn, and it'll turn it into a test, so it's... It's better than just because I can't like do the Quizlet where you just look at the definition and then click it, it flips over and it shows you the you know the word or whatever. Like I, I learn better by like actually taking tests, but you can turn Quizlet into a test by clicking learn and you can even make it to where you can type in answers or do multiple choice or whatever. So that's what I would recommend for that. But anyway, she sent me a bunch of uh, practice tests, practice quizzes, uh, she sent me extra videos for firewalls and the uh, inline commands uh, and stuff like that. She sent me a bunch of material and went over it. And after the third phone call, she told me, you know, I think you know this material and I think you're ready to take the uh, third OA. I took the third OA and passed it. Things to know with this course. Uh, you need to know your OSI model. Uh, you need to know that very well. Uh, you need to know firewalls, uh, your intrusion and prevention detection systems. You need to know your topologies. Uh, you need to know... Uh, a little bit about like data management, but not like a ton. Uh, what else? Your TCP IP. Uh, and you need to know like uh, network devices. You need to know which one, which part of the OSI they correlate with. Uh, there's quite a bit of information in this course. Um, there's three cohorts. And uh, I literally probably listen to them, and I'm not even kidding, probably 10, 15 times a piece. Uh, I've told you guys before, I work nights and I just roll around, you know, my town at night. And I literally would just put the cohort on and listen to it for you know several days in a row. Listen to all three of them over and over again, because all this is just so new to me. For somebody who you know works in an office setting where they deal you know, in like an IT setting where they deal with networks and stuff like that, this might be a little bit easier to you. But uh, as far as like cables go and you know networks and how they're set up and what does what and which OSI layer you know translates to and which different firewalls which different type of vulnerabilities and attacks like it was just like a fire hose of information that's brand new to me so uh that's why i think i kind of struggle with this course a little bit but yeah anyway there's three cohorts uh they're pretty good um if you need help i would schedule with the course instructor she's a very nice lady uh yeah, I did the do all the practice tests and everything you can. If uh, you don't have them readily available, I would email the course instructor and say, hey, can you send me you know, the multiple different practice quizzes and tests that you have? Uh, and I think she'll be more than happy to send those to you. Uh, this is a rare occasion where I actually read the book, you know, the course material, front to back. I, yeah, I know that's shocking. Throughout 90-some percent of my WGU career, I have not touched the reading material at all. On this course, I literally read the book front to back. And then even probably another half a time just like reviewing different parts of it. Um, I really struggle with the network commands uh, for some reason. I could not remember those very well. But it's something I kind of put on the back burner to try to retain everything else. But yeah, I mean, like I said, this course was just a fire hose of information. And it took me a while to just retain all of it. And then plus with my little bit of a hiccup, like just from failing the two OAs, uh, that set me back like a week in and of itself because I had to schedule all those meetings with her. And then, you know, I, after I had failed the OA twice, I was kind of nervous to take it a third time because you don't want to take it a fourth time because if you do, you what she told me is you have to wait two weeks before you can take your fourth attempt. 
So if you fail the third, you have to wait two whole weeks before you're even allowed to, uh, to take the fourth attempt. So that's just something to keep in mind. But that's all I really have. Uh, I wouldn't say this course is hard. Uh, I actually really enjoyed the course. It's very interesting to me. Like I enjoy the IT aspect and the network, you know, figuring out networks aspect of this course. So the course material is very interesting to me. It's just a lot and it's all so brand new. Uh, so that's, I guess, what the difference between D102, if you've ever seen that video, I failed that OA twice as well. But uh, as opposed to that course, which I hated and was super dry, I actually enjoyed this one. It was very interesting to me, but that's just a personal preference. But uh, yeah, if you're new to it like I am, uh, it's just one of those courses that you're going to have to spend some time with. I could have probably knocked it out a little bit sooner, but honestly, I don't know about how much sooner for me personally because you know, I just I needed to take the notes, I needed to do the studying, I needed to watch the cohorts multiple times, I needed to read the book. Like I needed all that to pass, but when I finally did all of that, take the practice quizzes and everything, once I finally did all that, I did pass it, and I passed it pretty well. I didn't pass exemplary, but if I would have answered probably one or two more questions right, I probably would have passed it. And that's another thing also, with the two OAs that I failed, I barely failed them. Uh, like, if I probably would have answered one, two more questions right on both of them, uh, I would have passed, uh, but I didn't, so here I am. But that'll wrap up the video. Uh, with this course, you just gotta do the work, you know? You just gotta actually put in the hours and study and you know do everything. Uh, but that's all I have. Um, hopefully this video comes out a little bit more clear than my last couple of videos. Uh, I recently started using a new device to uh, record. So the last couple of videos for some reason were a little like grainy and weird looking. Uh, again, not an IT professional, so I don't know why, but um, I think I might've figured it out because this one looks like it's a little bit better. Uh, but that's all I have. Uh, I have one OA left of this degree. That's exciting. Uh, it's Data Management Foundations, I think is the name of it. But yeah, I have one OA, the portfolio, and then the capstone, and then I am done with this degree. So uh, it's pedal to the metal, you know, I'm going hard in the paint as much as I can right now. If I can knock out the portfolio in the next like three days or so, because even that course says it's designed to be one of the easier PAs, <clears throat> and jump into data management foundations, I'll have plenty of time to graduate by mid-December like I want to. So uh, yeah, stay tuned because you should be getting another video here soon. But that's all I have. I'll see you on the next one.